Don in London, hello. Just checking the date then. July 9th. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol. And my behaviour, equally addictive around people, places and things. Trying to be in the right place, with the right people, doing the right things, with the right things. And these days, looking back, in my drinking days, absolutely trying to fit in, to be included, to be what I thought I needed and wanted to be, so that you would like me. Not such a difficult task. I didn't know that. By just being me, I could be okay. By just being me, trying to be open, honest and willing, trying to find trust in what I was doing and being on the right path, that is just simply living life and learning and enjoying it. After all, who ever said it was all about work? Or whoever put on their gravestone, people will remember me in work. Indeed, why do we want to be remembered at all? So, drinking was all about fixing for me, fixing the way I felt. It took the edge off, provided the opportunity to feel happy, joyful, sad, angry, remorseful, resentful, you name it. Drink played a part in letting my emotions out. And I didn't know how to, for a long, long time to live life sober. So a very long drinking career which took the edge off me and may be able to fit in probably with the wrong people in the wrong place, with the wrong things, wanting the wrong things. So life has changed dramatically in recovery but it wasn't an overnight success in terms of life working. Life only works today if I put the effort in to living to good the good of good conscience, open, honest and willing to see where life can take me and to have interests which are, to me, interested in life, interested in particular things I can do and also knowing what I cannot do. So number one is not to drink on a daily basis. It's the only part of a programme I follow which maybe I can get right 100% each and every day. So how did I get to where I am now? Well, left to my own devices, I would have been dead and gone a long time back. And that was because self-will perpetuated the idea that I needed to get it right. Stand on my own two feet, put on a brave face and keep on going when all around me might be falling away. Because I could do it, I was tough, tenacious and able. But of course, if we are tough, tenacious and able and become dominated by an idea of trying to do it all ourselves, to prove our worth to everyone. We become very lopsided in our outlook and in our be beliefs and in our behaviour. So drink got me in the end. It took a long time. It took me a long time to realise that drink wasn't doing me any favours and indeed kept me doing things which were not good for me, besides drinking. How was I helped? Well, simply, family, community, professionals kept me going long enough to get a moment of clarity. And the moment of clarity obviously was, I cannot beat addiction on my own. That was for me. That's how it worked for me. I, I don't presume the same for you. And then a fellowship, AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, became part of my life. I don't speak for AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, I just speak about how it helped me on a daily basis look at how to live open, honest and willing, trust in learning from others, have humility and do it one day at a time with a toolkit of steps, steps to take to keep well on track as best one can, making progress and never seeking to be perfect, never seeking to be perfect at all, at anything learning as I go and accepting I'm not the only learner on the planet and sometimes I get good advice and sometimes I get bad advice but it all depends on where it's coming from and how it is suggested to me so why does AA help me? well I'll share the AA preamble which is on this little card readily available from the Fellowship of AA and I don't promote AA I just say what you see is what you get on a daily basis and where you get the most information is to see 
what goes on in meetings of AA where people are talking about how to live sober. So it's the many people in AA which always give us the background, the wisdom and ways forward sober to live life, not their lives, our own. So this is what AA says about itself in the AA preamble and I like it because it's not about rules, laws or regulations, it's about suggestions. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. So that's it. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And in there, in a nutshell, AA is not ally allied with anything. But, uh, this is the big but, everybody in AA is al allied with something, be it an organisation, a faith, a religion, or no religion. Everybody comes into AA with their own personal outlook. But that's not about recovery. It's cherishing people's uniqueness and authenticity and then getting onto a path of sobriety which helps us decide what is right and works in our life. So it's the many voices around sobriety, the many voices around sobriety which makes the difference for me. And I'm saying this because July, there's a 12 step program, 12 steps, sounds like a lot. Actually there are 12 principles of living and understanding how to live well rather than live badly or live a very short life and go back to drinking often. So it's about balance, listening to the many voices and July is about shortcomings in one's own attitudes and behaviour. And My shortcomings often were around having faith, courage and confidence to find out the truth of what to do next because I'd been beaten so so flat and down by alcohol I had no clue what truth was anymore so it was lucky for me that I found it possible to find truth at all today I share my thoughts and feelings of what's happening for me and also from the AA Daily Reflections book for July 9th which is all about shortcomings not enough faith, courage and confidence to look at the best way to live life. That's how it used to be, but it's less of that. And more to do with humility, keeping keeping on learning how to live life. So the fellowship reading for today says, I am an instrument, July 9th, humbly asked him to remove our shortcomings. And the hymn in question there is God. So I know at any stage in my life, I have been atheist, agnostic and believer and sometimes it, you turn on the belief when it seems that life is going well but if you turn off the belief when life is going badly and think this isn't just isn't so then what happens? Life becomes more and more inward looking and isolated and for me the truth of God or God as an under, understanding for me is around truth, love and wisdom I can't define God for me and I can't define God for you but I do know that I sometimes feel like I have believed, may believe, or don't believe. It just depends on experience of life. But I do know one thing, I'm not God. So it's better that I listen to the, ve the very many voices in recovery, not only within the fellowship, but around me as well, who have experience, wisdom, and seem to be open, honest, and willing to share it, and not try and put me down. The subject of humility is a difficult one. Humility is not thinking less of me than I ought to. It is acknowledging that I do certain things well. It is accepting a compliment graciously. God can only do for me what he can do through me. He can only do for me what he can do through me. So when people say God works through people, we need to look at what people are up to because we know some people are off track. 
and it's not God working through them at all it's their self will their, their ideas probably quite narcissistic and self interest ruling humility is the result of knowing that God is the doer not me and if someone's doing harm it's not, it's not God it's them so do no harm is part of the philosophy in me in the light of awareness how can I take pride in my accomplishments and pride and humility can be seen as opposites pride I know best humility I don't know best I am the instrument and any and any work I seem to be doing is done by God through me unless it's self will unless it's me saying I want it my way or the highway I ask God on a daily basis to remove my shortcomings in order that I may more freely go about my AA business of love and service and when it's about free to go about my AA business of love and service love and service is about helping people get sober it's not telling them what to do and it's not telling them what God is it's not telling them anything it's saying if you if you can set life to these 12 principles uh, you can be open, honest and willing trust to good conscience and life can happen but it doesn't mean life is going to go your way I know that so that was AA's daily reflection and you know th this is a compilation of what has been said by people who have varying different beliefs and varying and various understandings of what is God no single definition of God is ever going to be right because if we could define God we would be wouldn't we and I don't think that will ever happen not in, this, not in my existence spiritual or otherwise certainly not for me anyway humility means a great deal to me this is me talking about me not only is it learning life every day it is about making mistakes and taking responsibility for my actions and the consequences I learn the truth how to love and be loved and developing wisdom to accept what I can and cannot do today I can share a message of experience, strength and hope but it's just one message it's always the many voices many many voices which help us temper and understand what is good conscience and what is the next best thing to do and often we do this in the blink of an eye and get it right and in the blink of an eye it can be a, can be a catastrophe because we think we think we know what's best for other people and we don't or at least I don't know I think we have to work out how to do this on our own in terms of where we are headed the path of our own life and it's not for someone else to say it's wrong unless it's causing harm to others I guess yes and this is really my thing always it is the many voices we need heed in our daily life if we rely too heavily on one voice usually that inner voice in our head the one that goes off here we go again that inner voice that one in here which says I don't believe what I'm hearing or I do believe what I'm hearing it can justify and make us judge and jury over others so I need to be careful not to judge others I need to keep on listening to many people and their wisdom to help me with my life and I share what I share but it's just one voice it's not I'm not definitive and I don't know any better than anybody else about anybody else's life I know that for, for a fact I may not want to live that life but that's just me and if I listen to and hear one voice out there which agrees with my own outlook I am short on humility and deep into my delusions of what is right for you and me and I don't know how could I possibly so those were my thoughts this morning on waking well not quite on waking I watched the the uh, TV news all about madness of newspapers media and what's going on in the UK and a certain person who's flying in today to try and solve it all having shut down one newspaper and the catastrophe of self will run riot getting political now that's just my outlook not many outlooks just mine from previous years help me with my shortcomings in the past I felt only the extremes of highs and lows good and bad feelings and I was self-medicating on alcohol and 
particular behaviour about trying to make me feel better about my situation when I felt horrible. Today I have more consistency and balance, understanding the extent of all my feelings, passion, compassion and love. Sober, gentle progress today. But you know, the deep feelings, so from coming from the extremes of highs and lows, where it can only be superficial, it may be feeling a very extreme feeling in our own minds, but it's fleeting, it doesn't last. So the deep feelings are somewhere in the middle where we understand we need a bit of all the good and the bad of life so we can make wisdom, we can develop our wisdom of what to do next. And the final statement from, I think it was about four years ago maybe, I speak for myself not for AA. AA, a fellowship of unique authentic people who choose to share their experience, strength and hope where they will. There are no spokespersons for AA, and that's absolutely right that there should be no, well, I feel it is right, but there's no shoulds in the fellowship. I feel it's right there are no spokes, spokespersons per se to say this is what the fellowship is and what it can and cannot do, because each person who goes to the fellowship of AA is looking for a desire to be sober, and then life happens. So AA is not about controlling people, it's about empowering people to make free choices. Unity, service and recovery assure equality, so one voice is no bigger, no smaller than another voice, and we value each other, each and every one of us, as we are, always, today. And in, it's an immense feeling of gratitude that it is about equality, that no voice is better or worse than another, another. And sometimes we agree with each other, and often we disagree emphatically with each other over things which have got nothing to do with sobriety, that may be about organisation, and may be about the world in general. Because fellowship is about sobriety. Only requirement is a desire to stop drinking. No rules, laws or regulations. Because if there were rules, laws and regulations, being rule breakers, law breakers, and people who stick two fingers or give the finger to regulations, there wouldn't be anybody there in the fellowship. Our past emphatically assures that. So it is about sobriety, learning how to be open, honest and willing to live life sober. Trust to the truth, love and wisdom as we understand it making progress and never being perfect never ever being perfect thank goodness for that because I've, I've tried that and it only ended in a veil of tears no, absolute misery, depression desolateness, isolation and alone in all respects especially with the thoughts in my head which was suicidal so I don't feel that way anymore Thank goodness, I do get the uh, cl clinical depression ups and downs, which is just part of me. I do have type 1 diabetes, which I've got in recovery, living long enough to get it from a virus. And I have sober to work with on a daily basis. Sober life works. Seems right for me. But, you know, if today some calamity happens... I need the many voices in fellowship, not just one voice which is going to say it's all going to be okay, it's the many voices which tell me I need work at what is going on. And it can be the horror of loss or it can be the absolute joy of something wonderful which we never expected. Again extreme feelings can push me into, I suppose, delusions. So I. I'm careful as best I can. The serenity prayer helps me at any time given my plight, be it good or bad, to what I can and cannot do. And it is the can do, can't do. And keep on learning the wisdom each and every moment, I guess. It's a bit philosophical, but it makes me feel more gentle about everything and find acceptance even in the hardest times. So to God or to not God, to good conscience or to whatever it is that feels like a higher power, which can be an exhortation 
and a meditation to good conscience I have come to understand, or to God as you come to understand. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Always for me, just for today, and most often in the moment of now. Thank you.